What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13.2 beta 2 about a week after the release of beta 1. So of course, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys what's new in this update and there are quite a few new changes in this one. I'll also be talking about the performance, the battery life and the bugs that were found in the first beta. So taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here it came in at just under 450 megabytes here on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. And of course, that size will vary depending on your device and also which firmware you're coming from now if you take a look at the build number if we go to settings general about 13.2 you can see there the build number here for beta 2 is 17b 5068e so that is a pretty big jump from beta 1 so i'm expecting to see a lot of changes and bug fixes here in beta 2. if we go down you can take a look at the modem firmware as well we went from 1.02.04 to 1.02.08 so also a nice jump there for the modem firmware if you were having issues with connectivity if you're dropping calls or if you're just having any kind of trouble with your cell signal that could be resolved here in 13.2 beta 2 thanks to that modem firmware update now as for the changes here in ios 13.2 beta 2 the first one is going to be new emojis this is going to be the big new feature that everybody's gonna be talking about with 13.2 beta 2 there are quite a few new emojis you can see there we have quite a few new ones obviously that first one with the pinching is going to be a girl's favorite new emoji um, we have the yawn emoji there we have the mechanical arm and a bunch of different emojis there to do with people and pets we have a dog there so there are quite a few new emojis i will have the full list of all the new emojis down in the description below if you want to see every single new emoji but one of the things i like most about what apple is doing here in 13.2 is the fact that you can actually have customizable emojis now so for example if a white girl and a black guy wanted to have their own custom couples emoji right there you could do that by simply tapping and holding on it and you can see right here i already have one custom made and it keeps it right there but if you did want to change it up you would just click on one of these so say we click on this one right here and then you also click on whichever girl you want right there as well in terms of the skin color so if you wanted that first one second one or a third one you know maybe something like that you could do that and now it's down here and you just tap on it and it gives you that emoji so really cool that it's now customizable again it's for both genders as well so if it's like you know a gay couple right there or just a straight male and female you can see there and then also female and female and also male and male right here as well so a lot of versatility now with the new emojis and it's also customizable so really great new feature there that apple has done here with 13.2 i think a lot of people have been requesting this for a while a lot of people felt like it was kind of discriminating against you know the ethnicities or the you know their choice in terms of you know gay or straight so i think it's good that apple actually included the ability to customize the emojis based on ethnicities and genders and things like that so really cool there and again if you want to see all the new emojis here in 13.2 i will have those down in the description below you can see that is just a few of them right there another major change here in 13.2 beta 2 is that there is actually a new sound when you 3d touch or haptic touch i should say on the home screen or anywhere throughout the os so you probably won't be able to hear this but okay you probably can't hear that but there is a new sound when you haptic touch on an application or in the control center anywhere and when you pull up the haptic touch menu there the quick menu you can see there are some new changes here as well so first of all it says edit home screen now instead of arrange apps like it showed before and now says edit home screen and you also notice right below that you can actually delete applications now straight from the haptic touch menu you could not do that before basically you would just have to go to edit home screen and you would have to click on the x and you would be able to do it that way now you can actually do it straight from within the menu which is really convenient because that was definitely it took a lot of steps to delete applications in the past now it's very easy you could do it straight from the haptic touch menu i really like this change here now something else i noticed when i was updating my phone you can see here you got this new prompt that said improve siri and dictation and basically it said help improve siri and dictation by allowing apple to store and review audio of your siri and dictation interactions on this iphone and on any connected apple watch or home pod you could change this later in the settings for each device this data is not associated with your apple id and will only be stored for a limited period so i thought this was very interesting that's the first time i've seen that i believe that is a new feature here as well and actually if you go into our settings and go to siri and search right here you will see that we have a new menu there for siri and dictation history and if you tap on that you can actually go ahead and delete your history whenever you want so that's a good thing for privacy because i know a lot of people if they agreed to this they may be worried about their privacy and things like that and they may want to delete it you can actually do that now within settings which is a really nice feature that apple is actually allowing you to delete that now also inside of the tv application if you go ahead and tap on a movie or a show you can see we get a new ad button up there 
in the top right. Just go ahead and add that. It will add it to your up next. And just for comparison, you can see this is what it was like before. You basically would have to go up to the top there. And this is what it looks like now in 13.2 beta 2. You have that right there instead of having that blue button right there where you would add it to next that way. 13.2 beta 2 also fixes the very buggy control center. So a control center in beta 1, uh, we would have some blank icons down here that would just not show any kind of icon, no glyph inside of the icon itself. And also if we went into our settings for control center, you can see that all the icons are here now and beta one some of them were just that white image there where it was like no image it was very glitched out it's very uh, buggy here in beta one but in beta two it has been fixed the control center has been fixed and it's back to normal photos application has also been fixed here in beta two a lot of people had issues when they went to the camera and had it sideways like taking a landscape photo and if they took a photo and then tapped right here to press and go to their photos the camera application would either crash or when they went to those photos, they weren't able to go to any other photos like their gallery. It would just, you know, be stuck on that one image. So that has been fixed here in beta two as well. Now, speaking of the camera application, there's a great new feature here in the camera application, more specifically with video. So now up here for the resolution and the frame rate, you could change that straight within the camera application. Now you don't have to go to settings to change that. So all you have to do is tap on where it says your resolution. You can see there it changed it from 4k to 720. Tap it again, it takes it to HD, which is 1080. Tap it again, and it goes to 4K. And it's the same with the frame rate there. It's on 30 right now. If we tap on that, it changes it to 60 right there. So that is a great new feature here introduced in 13.2 beta 2, just further eliminating the need to go into our settings to change things for our camera, which is all we've ever been asking for for like the past five years. Now, some other changes that were introduced in beta one that I just didn't cover in my initial video are the listening history inside of the music application. So this is something I really like. I feel like this has been a feature before, but I think it was just in iTunes on the PC. But basically, if you're listening to music and you tap on the up next right here and you scroll down, you will see you have your history of the songs you just recently listened to along with what's up next. So I really like this. Unfortunately, it does not work for radio stations, so you can't go back and see the history of the radio station songs, which is pretty unfortunate, but it is still cool that you could do it with regular songs. Now also in the control center, when you have to touch on the brightness or the volume icon right here, you will see that the glyph up in the top no longer shows the device that you're listening to. It actually just shows like a speaker right there. It doesn't show the iPhone or the AirPods or anything like that. However, when you do connect AirPods, let me show you guys what it looks like here inside of the control center glyphs. You can see there it shows the AirPods glyph inside of the volume indicator. I really like that change here. Again, that was introduced in 13.2 beta one. I just did not catch it my first time around, but I do like that change here in 13.2. And then I did also want to mention that the handoff to HomePod still doesn't work in beta two. I thought that would be fixed here in beta two, but it doesn't seem to be fixed, at least not for me. I will be testing that out a little bit further just to see if that does work. Hopefully by the time 13.2 gets released to the public, it will be working flawlessly. Now, as far as 13.2 beta one, I was having quite a few bugs with it. I mean, a lot of things would crash. Like for instance, DraftKings would always crash the first time. And then the second time I opened it up, it would be fine, but it would just load really slow. And that was the case with a lot of third-party applications. It seemed that 13.2 beta one really broke a lot of third-party applications and sometimes even first-party applications. They would just be really slow to open up. Some would crash. Again, I had like the, the uh, photos application crashed on me. I had Safari crash one time. So there were definitely some stability issues with 13.2 beta one that sometimes expected with a first beta, but it was pretty bad on beta one for me. However, it seems that since we're so many builds ahead here in beta two, it seems that a lot of those bugs are going to be fixed here in beta two. Of course, I will touch on that in my follow-up video, but it seems to be the case. Now, as far as mail, a lot of people had a lot of issues with mail on iOS 13 in general, but especially 13.2 beta one. However, I can confirm that marking emails as read works perfectly now in 13.2 beta one. It would kind of just go back to being unread when you clicked out of the application. So that does work properly now. However, some people did have an issue where when they sent a message, it would show up twice in their sent inbox or their outgoing inbox. I don't know if that's been fixed. That was never an issue for me, but some people did have that. So if you want to test that out on 13.2 beta two and let me know if it's been fixed, I would appreciate that. But it seems that overall the mail application is fixed a little bit, but it seems like it's probably going to have bugs for a while now since it has had bugs since 13.0 beta one. But as far as the performance goes in 13.2 beta one, performance wise, again, 13.1.2 felt a lot quicker and had a lot less crashes and issues overall, but just raw performance wise, 13.2 beta one wasn't bad. It was really just the crashing that made it seem really bad. 
bad, but as far as fluidity and playing games and things like that, I didn't really have any lag or anything like that. So beta one wasn't bad, but 13.1.2 is definitely better just because it felt a little bit quicker, didn't have as many crashes and things like that. So hopefully beta two is a lot better than beta one. I'm expecting it to be, uh, but we will see. I will tell you guys in my follow-up video. Now, as far as battery life goes, I have been playing some Call of Duty Mobile, some Mario Kart and things like that. And the battery felt the same as 13.1.2 for me on beta one. So I'm expecting 13.2 beta two to be the exact same in terms of battery life uh, to beta one. So hopefully it doesn't have any issues for me. I know a lot of people did report battery drain with 13.2 beta one. I never had that. I am on the 11 Pro Max. I was also using it on my iPad Pro and also my iPhone 11 here. So I'm not sure if that's just an issue with the older devices or not. I'm not sure, but if you did have battery issues in 13.2 beta one, let me know if they've been fixed here in beta two. And speaking of iOS 13.2 and the new iPhones, Deep Fusion is definitely a big upgrade in the camera department for the iPhone 11s. I haven't really posted anything about that because I was saving them all for my iPhone 11 review but definitely a noticeable difference with deep fusion compared to just smart hdr on the older devices now one thing i noticed and i tweeted this out on twitter as well and you can see here i said so it seems that deep fusion automatically overrides slash disables capture outside the frame on ios 13.2 so we'll see if that's been fixed here in 13.2 beta 2 i will report to you guys on that and let you know. So now should you install iOS 13.2 beta two? And again, if you're on an iPhone 11 Pro Max, iPhone 11 or iPhone 11 Pro, I would recommend it now, especially since it is a little bit more stable than beta one so far. But if you're not on a new iPhone, like the iPhone 11s, I would not install it just because there aren't enough new features or changes to really justify updating to a potentially, you know, buggy, firmware. I mean, it's not perfect. It's better than beta one, but it's not perfect. 13.1.2 is still going to be more stable. And these new emojis, you know, none of your friends are going to be able to see them unless they update. And most of your friends probably aren't updated. Deep Fusion, you're not going to get that benefit on any phone that isn't the iPhone 11. So there's really not too many changes to you know, entice you to update to 13.2 with the bugs and things like that. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 13.2 beta two. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm sure there are other changes and features. I will be covering those in my follow-up video coming out later this week. If you guys did enjoy this video though, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss my video on 13.2 beta three and all future versions of iOS 13. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.